In 2013, just one year after the presidential election, the U.S. Supreme Court heard the case of Shelby County v. Holder. Shelby County v. Holder was a landmark case on the credibility of Section 5 and Section 4B of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. These two sections protected the voting rights of various marginalized groups by forcing states with a history of discrimination to clear out new voting laws with the federal government before putting them into law. Shelby County and the rest of Alabama, as well as Alaska, Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Hampshire, and North Carolina were all required to submit voting laws for review to ensure that they do not deny or abridge the right to vote on account of race, color, or membership in a language minority group. However, after the jurisdiction reached in this case, they are now free to make any voting laws that they deem necessary. American Americans were living during a time of pure terror in their efforts to try to exercise this right that we all enjoy under our democracy. African Americans were being uh, victimized, tortured, uh, they were being killed in many instances for trying to exercise that right to vote. So not only were the numbers low, the, what's, what was behind those low numbers were, were, was that African Americans were being intimidated and were being kept from the polls. So the Voting Rights Act was so needed to ensure that African Americans could indeed enjoy this right like other Americans. Uh, free of, uh, of other encumbrances, like, uh, like being terrorized, like uh, being subject to things like poll taxes and literacy tests. Bill Gilkison is a North Carolina attorney who specializes in election law. Here he explains the key points in Shelby County versus Holder. Uh, Shelby County versus Holder, the U.S. Supreme Court said that the um, formula in Section 4 for defining how a uh, which jurisdictions were going to be subject to this pre pre clearance requirement uh, that th that formula was out of date uh, because it went all the way back to the 1960s and uh, so it was un unconstitutional it it was unfair to these states like Alabama and Mississippi and certain parts of North Carolina that were having to uh, whenever they made a change to their voting rights laws, having to run it through the, the federal government and get approval. Because of Shelby County versus Holder, many states can now change their voting laws to their own satisfaction. Overall, states began to restrict their voting practices. Examples of these restrictions include shortening of early voting periods, voter ID requirements, and eliminating same-day voter registration. For many lawmakers, these changes work to ensure that elections are conducted fairly and without fraud. Others, however, have concerns that voting changes such as voter ID laws impact certain groups of people, such as minority voters, senior citizens, and college students, many of whom tend to vote democratically. Well, I don't think we have a strategy to go toward stricter laws. We want everybody to have a fair opportunity to vote, have it counted, and counted equally to everybody else. There has been legislation here in the General Assembly which we think had the specific goal of suppressing uh, ethnic and racial minorities, yeah. their ability to vote. So um, the issue that got the most press was the requirement for a photo ID. I oppose it. I don't think it's necessary. But mm -hmm. you, could, you could have an argument whether that is or is not necessary. Yeah. But if you look at so many other provisions of that bill, it's clear that it was aimed at suppressing votes. Um, it restricted, uh, it lessened, it, it made it harder to vote early. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, reduced uh, the number of Sundays you could vote. And so that was couched under uh, the guise of efficiency, reducing costs and so forth. But if you start to look at the statistics, you see what demographics tend to vote disproportionately early, what demographic tends to disproportionately vote on Sundays. Um, same, what demographic tends to make use of same-day registration, things like that, and you really start to see a pattern of a direct attempt uh, to suppress the voting rights of African Americans. Some perspective on it. Their whole, they filed a lawsuit about it in federal court saying it's going to suppress the votes, suppress voters. Well, we just had a midterm election, which had the second highest turnout of a midterm election in I'll say modern history, and 
especially higher were early voting. They said it would suppress that. Uh, young people were up and um, uh, African Americans were up as a percentage. So all of their supposed complaints about suppressing the vote just didn't pan out. The purpose of these new laws is to make it harder for certain people to vote. Mm -hmm. To make it harder for racial minorities to vote. To make it harder for college students to vote. To make it harder for people to vote who don't vote the way the people who pass the laws want them to vote. Mm -hmm. Whether recent changes in election laws will actually impact access to the voting process remain to be seen, but what is clear is that the Shelby County v. Holder decision opened the door for many states to make changes to their state election laws. Alabama, South Carolina, Mississippi, and Virginia have made changes to their voter ID laws, making it so that procedures that previously only required utility bills or bank statements now require valid photo ID. Some of the changes create extra difficulty for people who have recently legally changed their name, such as married women or transgender people. The difference between these regulations and those in states such as North Carolina and Texas is that the previously stated states have promised to make photo IDs available and accessible. In North Carolina and Texas, however, if you don't have a government-issued photo ID and don't live near a DMV, your SOL. Specifically in Texas, you can vote using your gun license, but not a student ID. North Carolina recently moved to cut down on same-day registration and out-of-precinct voting, adding more unnecessary complication to the voting process, especially when observed in the context of redistricting and changes in early voting dates.